I hung up in his face. Get in here, get in here, get in here, honey, okay? It's raining like cats and dogs outside. So before I go out, we're going to have some time together. I'm going to put on my makeup, honey, and we have a nice little conversation about how I hung up in his face. And by him, I'm referring to my ex, honey, okay? Comment below with this one, okay? First of all, let me know that you liked and shared this video so I can call you out. Second of all, okay, we've all got that one person in our life. Some of us have multiple people in our life. When we think about them in our past, we can't help but just say, ugh, they turn our stomach, okay? This particular person I'm talking about today is my ex, okay? I'm not giving names, okay, but I will definitely give you a story all about it, honey. And I'm grateful to him because he gave me a fabulous lesson I'm going to share with you all today. Okay, so we're going to get my makeup on, honey, because I'm not going out barefaced, okay? So y'all get in here, get in here, get in here right now, honey. I'm not giving you any new tricks with makeup, honey. I'm doing the same old, same old, but that's not what it's talking about today okay so get this all right i'm out here you know out here you know me globe trotting and stuff and and all that good stuff right and i get this call primer honey i put primer on first okay i know it looks crazy but trust me it does something that coats the skin so i get this call right and i get the call on my other cell phone you know how you always got more than one cell phone so i get a call on my other cell phone thank you so much margaret for sharing this video okay and i get a call and the number on there is I didn't even recognize the number. I recognized the area code, but I didn't recognize the number, right? So I get this call, and I was like, um, voicemail. Mm -mm, I'm not answering that, okay? I'm, I'm not the type to answer calls I don't really recognize. Then, next thing I know, I get a call again from the same phone number, right? This is my little poof, okay? I get a call from the same phone number, right? And so I'm like, who is this person, okay? I know it looks like a lot, but honey, it's not, okay? So anyway, I'm like, who is this person, right? So then... He calls again. I'm like, I don't know who this is. So next thing I know, I get a text message saying, oh, have you forgotten about me? I said, by me, who is this? Who is, who is me? Who is me? That's right, Sandra Marshall said, tea time, baby. Get your glass, okay? So I, so I said, who is me? He says his name. I was like, ugh, all right? And so I looked at ugh, right? I'm gonna say the story all about it, okay? About how I got to, ugh, okay, there's a lesson in this, okay? Y'all got time for me today? Should I go fast? Should I go slow? You want the story quick or fast? I'm gonna tell you, or you want the details? What you want? So anyway, so, I, so I, he, says, he says, can you please give me a call? And I'm thinking, he don't never call me about nothing. Maybe he calling me about his mother, okay? I halfway liked her. So I was like, maybe something happened to her, all right? So I said, let me call him up. So I called him back and I was like, I was like, I was like hey, what's going on? What's tea, right? So anyway, he says to me, hey, I'm going to be visiting Bali. I'm going to be visiting Bali. Bali, okay? And I was just curious to see, would you be available on XYZ date, okay? I'll tell you more about that conversation in a minute, but let's take a, a trip down memory lane so you can understand why I want nothing to do with this man, honey. And I'm telling you there's a lesson in this, okay? And I've got something special for you all later on, okay? So listen. Take a trip down memory lane. This is some time ago. This is back in my days living in D.C., okay, before I was in L.A., okay? So anyway, I was living in, in D.C., and I got invited to this event. Now, y'all don't want to believe me when I tell you this because y'all don't believe that me. It's greasy. But the reality is this. I am an introvert. Y'all don't like to believe that, okay? I really am, honey. I love coming on this camera. I love having a good time with you all, but I'm an introvert. It's just who I am. So I was at this event, honey, and I was just sitting there trying to, you know, just, just trying to halfway be social, but I really wasn't being social that good. And then next Next thing I know, he walks up to me, okay? Y'all want a story time? Do you want the full story? You just want me to give you the quick little details, honey. Y'all supposed to be at work working right now, okay? Put your headphones in. So anyway, this man comes up to me, okay? He is tall. I'm all of five, seven and a half on a good day, okay? He comes up. He's at least a solid six, one, six, two, okay? So that's taller than me. So he comes up and then he says, excuse me, is someone sitting right here beside you? Is someone sitting beside you? I was sitting at the bar. It was like a little bar stool. I said, um, no, nobody's sitting beside me. And when I looked and glanced, I'm like, oh my God, he is handsome, honey, okay? I want you to picture this, okay? He had a shape, and his face was kind of shaped like mine, kind of like an almond. You see what I'm saying? Shaped like that, okay? He had a nice little low cut, kind of like mine, too. You see? But the thing about him that made him so different than me, honey, he had the kind of muscles that just popped out of his clothes. You see what I'm saying? You know when somebody has, has a nice physique and it just kind of comes through their outfit? Thank you so much, Yvonne, for sharing this video. Y'all, let me know you shared it, okay? Tiana, um... 
and says she wants the full story. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. I won't take too long with it, okay? And so anyway, so he, he's got the muscle. I'm seeing, his, I'm seeing his shoulders come out of his, his shirt and he looked like he just came from work, right? So he looked like he was just coming from work because the event I was at was like at six o'clock. So he looked like he just came from work. He had a nice like kind of shirt on, like one of those Thomas Pink shirts and a real nice quality um, button up shirts and everything like that. But I can see his muscles coming through. I look down his shoes. I always look at the shoes and the watch, right? And that looked correct. Everything looked nice. You see what I'm saying? So anyway... He looked real nice. He looked real good and everything like that. And so I said, well, no, nobody's sitting beside me. Now, baby, I was a stone's throw from 25. I was so young. And so I said, I said, nobody's sitting there. You can sit there if you want to, right? And he sits down beside me, honey. He was at least a good seven to 10 years older than me. He was older than me, okay? And I could feel that he was more mature than me. So he sits down and he says, um, are you having anything to drink? And back then I did like, I did have a cocktail back then. I don't drink nowadays. But anyway, back then I said, I said, yeah. And so I said, I'm going to have the so-and-so, right? He says, okay, I'll grab it for you. I I said, I'll go with you. You're not going down to the other end of the bar to get me a drink. I'm going with you. I, 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 see what? See them make your drink. I don't give us a glass of water. You need to watch them make it, okay? Don't let nobody go get you nothing, all right? So anyway, I went down there with him. And so we go get the little drink and we come back. He's like, so, um, he's like, I've never met you before. I said, that's because I don't go out very much, okay? <laughs> I said, I don't go out very much. He, say, he says, he says, well, neither do I. I said, well, that's two of us, huh? And he said, um, he says, and your, um, your partner, your boyfriend, your husband, your somebody, are they here? Are they going to be offended that I'm sitting here talking to you? That's one of my lines I used today. I got it from him. And so I said, um, I said, no, I don't think anybody would be offended. I said, because I'm single. He says, oh, okay. I said, and are you, are you single? He said, yeah, I'm single. I said, oh, oh, okay. So we start chit-chatting and talking and everything like that. Have you ever had a conversation with someone where they take your full attention? Thank you so much, Deborah Burrell, for sharing this video. They take your full attention. I forgot I was at a party. I forgot there was other people there. We talked for an hour straight. And I looked at the clock. I had to go somewhere. He says, I'll walk you to your car. I said, I'm just fine. I'm just fine. He says, I will walk you to your car. He said, I can't let you walk alone. So he walks me out to my car, right? I get to my car, hit the little alarm thing. I put, extend my hand, open the door. He says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Listen to what he said, girls. Listen to what he said. He said, he said, when I'm in your presence, you don't ever touch a doorknob. I said, okay. So he opened the door for me. Opened the door for me. I was like, ha <laughs> All right, so he opens the door for me and I squeeze into my Honda Accord, honey. I had my nice little Honda Accord, honey. I was, a, I was starting out, girls, okay? I had me a late model Honda Accord that I got from the used car dealership. It was the only thing I qualified for, but I love that car. So I got into my car, I used to call her Roxy. So I got into old Roxy and you just thought I was getting into a Bentley the way he opened that door for me. He slides that door, but I slid down inside it, honey, all right? Oh, I damn near did a curtsy into the car. And so, so he said, he, so he leans over the car, like his hand was on like the, on like the, the roof of the car. He leans into it and he likes, when am I going to see you again? I said, um, when would you like to see me again? Right? When would you like to see me again? Honey, I may be shy, honey, but I still got gang. So I said, I said, when would you like to see me again? He says, um, <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm the wrong kind of guy, but if I could see you later on this evening, I would love it. I said, mm, mm. I said, then you think I'm the wrong kind of person here. I said, no, no, no. He said, I'm just playing with you. He said, how about this? Um, this is a Friday night. He says, how about Monday? I was like, I have dinner plans on Monday. He says, then let me take you to lunch. Jump right into, then let me take you to lunch. I said, okay, you can take me to lunch, right? And he says, all right. And so he said, where you work? I told him where I work, like the area. I didn't tell him the company. And then so anyway, um, Comes that time, he sends me a little text message on that day and says, meet me at XYZ restaurant, right? I thought he forgot. So I go down there, I'm in my little work outfit, go to lunch with him, we sit down, we're talking and everything like that. When I tell you the chemistry was amazing, the whole time that we are sitting at lunch, okay? The whole time we're sitting at lunch, he's leaning over the table. You ever been in a conversation with a man and he leans over the table and he's just staring at you the whole time? Somebody said, why are your eyes so glossy? Because I have a ring light, baby, it's a light in front of me. So anyway, um, so I'm leaning in and he's leaning in the whole time as I'm talking. And everything I said, he found funny. Everything he said, I found funny. That's one of the tips I give you girls when you go on a date, okay? Men love to, seem, love to feel like they're interesting, okay? So laugh at everything they say. Make them feel like they're the most interesting person on earth, honey. He'll do a lot better in that case, okay? So anyway, the whole time I'm leaning in, leaning in, and leaning in, and he's leaning in. We're just talking ha, 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 ha. At one point in time, I told a good joke because I'm legitimately funny, okay? I told a good joke. He laughs, ha, 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 and his hand goes under the table and just, 
gently grabs my knee. <laughs> I was like, ooh, honey, sit the chill up my spine. I didn't recognize how big his hands were. You see what I'm saying? It just was a nice grab, but this story is not even about none of that, okay? Listen to me, okay? I'm going somewhere with this so you can understand why I hung up on him when he called me, okay? I'm about to create a cheekbone here, okay, honey? All right, as I get older, I need to make sure I have angles, so we have to manufacture them sometime, okay? Nothing's wrong with this, okay? A little concealer, y'all see that lightning right there? I did this last time, I'm showing y'all again, okay? That's all I got to do, I put it a little too close in. I do it up here too. Anyway, so listen, 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 I'm not done, I'm not done. So he, we, I'm laughing, he laughing, we kicking and giggling and giggling and giggling, and he says to me, he says, you know what? Hmm. He says, is it wrong that I don't want to go back to work? I said, well, judging by your watch, you at a much higher level within your job than I am, honey. I'm entry level in my job, so I got to go back. He says, I know, but when can I see you again? That's a sign right there, okay, honey? When these men try to play hard to get and make you feel like you got to chase them down, honey, it means they don't want you, okay? Because when a man wants you, honey, he is trying to figure out the next date before the first date ended, okay? So listen, he says, when can I see you again? Now, here's my thing. I knew this even as a young one. Never be available instantly. Mm-mm. Never. So I said, well, you see that cheekbone that just came in there? Honey, I just, I just lost 10 pounds, okay? But see, that line's too heavy. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. So anyway, um, so I said, well, um, can I get back to you and let you know when I'm available? He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, but please don't take too long. Don't take too long. I said, okay, I promise I won't, right? I said, I promise you I won't. So anyway, I waited a little while, maybe a day or two, right? And then he hits me up again. He says, are you gonna tell me when you're available? Or am I gonna have to keep waiting? I had him just where I wanted him. And so I said, oh, I'm so sorry, I got busy. I said, I'm available this Friday, if you are. He said, of course I'm available. He said, what you wanna do? I said, you can take me to your favorite restaurant. See, I tell you, it's okay to tell them you want them to take you on a date. Y'all be waiting on them to tell you what to do. Uh-uh, tell him what to do. You can take me to your favorite restaurant, right? I may have been a young broad, but I knew what to do, all right? So anyway, anyway, I'm getting myself together, y'all, okay? So anyway, Friday rolls around. He takes me to this beautiful restaurant. We have even more chemistry. I know it's daytime and some of you girls homeschool, so I'm not gonna tell you the full story, but let me tell you this. Over the next couple weeks, we went into a whirlwind romance, okay? It went from having dinners occasionally to having him cook for me at his home to having us canoodle many nights. We were always together. And by canoodle for the little ones who ask what that means, that means spending time together, okay? We would spend time together. Literally, it got to the point where I didn't even know what my house looked like anymore. I was always with him. And let me tell you about the house, honey, because we do judge the men by their houses, don't we? Okay, first of all, okay, I don't care if the house is big or small. I always lift the toilet seat to see if it's clean. I want to make sure, and I look around the toilet. The toilet was spotless, okay? The floor around it, spotless. Okay, the home, nicely decorated. Nicely decorated as if he decorated it, not as if his ex decorated it. You know we know the difference, right? We do know the difference, don't we know the difference? Anywho, the, um, the house beautifully decorated in a masculine kind of way, okay? I looked around, I'm walking around, because he showed me the house, I'm not being nosy, anything like that. The bathroom mirror, clean. I love that kind of stuff, okay? The kitchen, clean, okay? I even did a refrigerator check. How I did that was when I got there, he says, are you thirsty? I said, baby, sit down, I'll go get something. I went to the refrigerator the first time, nicely organized, okay? Put together, okay? I was always at his house, okay? His house was nicer than mine. So anyway, I was always with him. Well, everything was going so perfectly. Everything was going so well. Everything was going amazing with him. Picture it for probably about, mm, shoot. By this point, maybe almost a year in, we were together for a while. You know what I'm saying? Meeting families and all this other stuff. But then this one particular day, okay? I'm not done yet. We were out and about on this one particular day. And while we were out and about, one of my friends who I had not seen in a while, I knew him from back in Philly when I went to school up there. My friend came up and my friend walked up and said, hey, how are you? I haven't seen you forever. And hugged me real tight, damn, they lifted me off the ground. This one of my good friends, my good Judy's, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? So anyway, he lifts me up off the ground and I said, oh my God, it's so good to see you. 
And then so then I look over to my boo-boo and I said, this is my friend so-and-so. And my boo-boo's like, yeah, what's up? How you doing? He wasn't that warm. I noticed it, but I didn't say anything. As time went along and time went along, I noticed that his text messages throughout the day that used to be so warm and nice, used to feel like he cared about me. After a while, it made me feel like he was keeping tabs on me. Where you at? What you doing? You see what I'm saying? As time went along, time went along, time went along, the outfits they used to love for me to wear, they showed my little shape, honey. I got a little bit of a shape, honey, okay? You girls got your big Deborah shapes, okay? I got little Debbie cakes, okay? That's my shape. I got a little Debbie kind of body, but I still got a shape on me, okay? So anyway, he used to love my shape. He used to love me to wear cute things, okay? After a while, when I'd be about to go out, he would tell me, you gonna wear that? You gonna wear that? And I say, well, yeah, what's wrong with that? I don't know about that outfit. Why don't you try something different? You know, baby, I see the way these men be looking at you. That don't make me comfortable. Come on, baby, don't wear that. Don't do that to me. And every time I changed my clothes, and you know why I did it? You know why I changed my clothes every time? I changed my clothes every time because the fact is that I felt wanted. You know what I mean? The fact that he, that he cared enough to tell me his opinions on my clothes. The fact that he, that he was always around. The fact that I never had to wonder where he was at because I was always with him. And if I wasn't with him or he wasn't with me, then we was always in communication. I didn't pay attention to the fact that we was always in communication because he never let a moment go by without keeping tabs on me. See, I was young, I didn't know no better. Y'all listen, I'm trying to school you on something. You saw that lightning back there, honey? That's the, that's, that's the spirit telling you, you about to get a lesson today, okay? Thank you for sharing this video, Justine and Curtis. Okay, oopsie, all right? So anyway, time went along, time went along, and these behaviors that I thought of as chivalrous, as him being a, a, a concerned partner, as him caring about me so much, I learned that there was a darker intention behind that behavior. And I'll tell you, I learned that one day, coincidentally, it was a very rainy night like this. We were driving through the suburbs of Washington, D.C., going back to his house. And on this particular night, we were leaving an event. And at that particular event, I wore this outfit that I loved. I had been working out so much, and I had this beautiful outfit that I loved, honey, okay? I had these nice jeans, they were cute, and I had this nice cream cashmere sweater, honey, it hugged me the right way, baby, okay? I had some cute little Chelsea boots, y'all know the Chelsea boots, I had my Chelsea boots on, and I felt so cute, honey. I felt tall and statuesque, honey, I felt beautiful, okay? When I walked in the room, the women and the men were telling me how nice I looked, and I appreciated it. He didn't say much that night. I thought I was covered up. I'm wearing, I'm, you can't even see my collarbone that night. Thank you so much, Darlene, for sharing this video. And Tawana, let me know you shared this, okay? And she said, I shared this because someone needs this. You're right, they do need this. So share this, I'm about to give y'all something, okay? So anyway, I'm thinking everything's fine. My ankles was covered, my collarbone was covered. All I was wearing was a little cashmere, it was fitted, but it wasn't nothing crazy. So we driving, the whole time we driving home, he just driving like this. And I said, baby, you had a hard day. Because, you know, by this time I had gotten to know him. And I knew that sometimes he came home a little angry, a little mad. But he just had a high-powered job. I said, baby, did you have a hard day? He said, my day was fine until this evening. I said, well, what happened this evening? I shouldn't have said that. I'm not going to cuss. Because I know y'all got your babies on it. But I'm going to tell you this. He said, he said, you know what? happened this evening he had never spoke to me like that before he had never spoke to me like that before pay attention when they change you think oh no this is just a, this is just a this is a one-time thing nobody he's giving you baby he's giving you a preview of what's ahead okay he said you know what happened this evening i said what happened baby he said the way you disrespected me all night long What you mean, baby? What you mean how I disrespected you? Right? I'm sitting in the car. You got to think, baby. I'm young. He older than me. He got more money than me. He got everything more than me. I'm intimidated. He's a big man. I never thought he put his hands on me. 
But I was, I mean, you know how that is. And so I said, what you mean I know what it is? You, that I know what happened. What you mean, baby? He said, don't call me baby either. I don't think I'd ever call him anything other than baby since the first night he had taken me to his home. <laughs> Barely a year ago, you know? You know? I said, what you mean? He said, the way you was parading around in there, you was showing off just trying to get attention in there. You disrespecting me. I don't even know why you was acting like that. Acting like what? Acting like what? The more questions I asked, the more I seemed confused, the more mad he got. I said, what you mean? Next thing I know, I felt the car starting to accelerate. Mm -hmm. You hear the engine getting louder and louder as if he's accelerating more and more. I'm like, baby, what's going on? Baby, what's going on? Why, what's wrong? What's wrong, baby? Slow down. You know, because I'm trying to focus on trying to figure out what's going on with him. But I'm like, we're driving faster. And we was on like one of these backcountry roads. And I'm like, so, baby, what's going on? And he's like, he's like, nah, we're going to talk about it at home. And I realized he's not speeding, trying to scare me. He's rushing home because whatever he got to say or whatever he wants to do, he want to do it in the house. I said, baby, why don't you slow down? Why don't we stop at the store for a minute? I need to pick up something. I may have been young, but I wasn't stupid. I'm like, you're not going to have me alone in the house with this man. I don't know what he's doing. He's showing me a side of himself I ain't never seen before. I said, I said, why don't we stop at the store, baby? I just want to grab something from the store before we go in. He said, nah, we'd be already going to the house. I said, baby, can we stop for a minute? Next thing I know, he pulls over to the side of the road. He says, he says, you want to stop? Get out of the car. There's some cuss words in it, I'm not saying them. Get out of the car. I said, baby, what's wrong? I said, why are you telling me you out there? Get out the car. I said, baby, 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 this is dark at night. It's one of those back roads. You see what I'm saying? If y'all know PG County, outside DC, like those back roads back in like Mitchellville. You see what I'm saying? And so I'm like, well, hold on, baby. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to get out. I just wanted to stop at the store. We're on the side of the road. And he leans over, unlocks the door with his hand, right? With the other hand, he's hitting the seatbelt. And he pushes it open and starts trying to push me out the car. I swear to y'all. I had never had him touch me in any way that reflected anything other than love before then. I had never experienced that from him. He wasn't somebody who really drank that much, so I didn't think he was drunk. I know he didn't use any, any substances or nothing like that. So I'm like, what is going on? So he's pushing me, and then as he's doing it, his foot is still kind of on the gas, so the car's still moving and jerking and everything like that. It's chaotic. And so I'm like, baby, what are you doing? And so anyway, I said, you're, you're going to hurt me. And then I guess that snapped him out of it. He said, close the door. So I closed the door. I'm scared at this point. He said, we're going to go back to the house. I said, okay. I said, okay. And if I was, I'm going to tell you the truth. Because a part of me is too ashamed to admit this now, but I think you need to hear this. This wasn't the first time I had dealt with a man. Even at that younger age, this was not the first time I had dealt with a man who had crossed the line in terms of um, putting his hands on me. First time that happened was I was in college. The thing about our relationships that we have to think about is that our relationship patterns are just that patterns. Often what we're tolerating in one relationship, the prior relationship prepped us for it. And even if it wasn't a prior relationship, it was a family dynamic. You don't accept mistreatment overnight. You accept it because it's familiar. Familiar don't mean it feels good, but it's familiar. So in my mind, I thought, we're going to get back to the house. I'm going to calm him down. I can calm him down. I can calm him down. I'm going to calm him down. I'm going to calm him down. We get back to the house, we pull in there. I did what I knew to do when you want to calm a man down. I talk real soft. I didn't raise my voice. Because when you raise your voice to the level of his voice, he's going to raise his even louder. So you never raise your voice to their level. Talk calm. You hold the level. 
I'm not trying to tell you how to tolerate mistreatment. I'm just trying to tell you how to get through a situation if you ever find yourself in one. And I hope you don't. I talked real soft and I said, baby, what's going on? How you doing? What's going on? He grabbed my arm and said, get away from me. I said, baby, let's just, let's just lay down. Let's just lay down. Let's just lay down. Right? So I grabbed him and I hugged him real close. And I just kept rubbing on his shoulders and I rubbed his back in a, in a circle. Almost like how you do with a baby to calm him. It calms them. And I'm rubbing his back. I'm like, baby, let's just go to bed. Let's just go to bed. Let's just lay down. Let's just lay down. Let's just lay down. Let's just lay down. We laid down. I laid on my side. He laid on his side. The next morning I got up. I went back to my house that day. I told him I had errands to run. He wasn't dumb. He knew where I went. And how I knew he knew where I went was because I got a bouquet of flowers at my house that afternoon. Big, beautiful flowers. I love hydrangeas and hyacinths. Those are my favorites. I love the smell. It was a big bouquet of them. And what it said was, I love you. You are my world. You are my life. I want to make you feel amazing. And I'm sorry if I didn't make you feel like that last night. I love you. Sign with his name. Don't judge me, y'all. But my heart fluttered. Because at the end of the day, that's all we really want in it. We just want them to stop treating us the way they treated us. We just want them to go back to who we remember them as. We don't want to see them as the person at that moment showed us that they may be. We want to see them as we hope that they would be. We want to see them based on who they showed us originally. And so when he gave me those flowers with that apology, I thought maybe it was just a moment. Maybe he was just going through something. You know what I mean? I at least hope that was the case. I decided I was going to stay home that night. Well, he texted me and said, baby, am I going to see you tonight? I said, I'm going to stay home and clean up. I ain't been home in a while. He said, can I come by and see you? As much as I wanted to say no, I said, I said, yeah, you can. He came and knocked at my door. As soon as I knocked at, as soon as he knocked at the door and I opened it, a part of me was happy to see him. I was happy to see him. I was. I'm telling you the truth. But a bigger part of me just wanted to ask him why he had behaved that way. But before I could say anything, as soon as I opened the door, he grabbed me and lifted me off the ground to hug me so tight. And then once he let me back down on the ground, he put his hand on the back of my head and just embraced me and buried his face into my shoulder. And as he's burying his face, I felt his body shaking. I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. He was crying. I had never seen him cry. Mind you, I knew him for a year. I would never seen this man cry before. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I never wanted to, I never wanted to treat you like that. I swear to you, baby, I'm not that kind of man. I swear to you, baby. As much as I did not want to listen to him, as much as I wanted to be done with him, there was still that part of me that felt so good having him there. That felt so good believing that this man wants me so much that he would come here, drive all this way to apologize and cry because he wants me so much, he don't want to lose me. That's what I thought. So I stayed with him <laughs> for much longer than I care to admit. 
That behavior that I experienced that night, I wish I could tell you that it was just that night, but eventually it became a consistent thing. The outbursts, the yelling, the grabbing, the pushing. I remember when he tried to push me down the stairs because he was going off so bad, I ran out the room and I'm trying to run down the stairs just because I wanted to get, I just was trying to leave. And he's like, you're not gonna leave, you're not gonna leave. Stay right here. And as I'm trying to run down the stairs, he grabs me and I yank my arms, I'm trying to run. And he grabs me again, so I, he yanks me back. And after he yanks me back, he turns me around. You're not gonna leave. And I'm, so I'm leaning over the steps like this. And I saw the look in his eyes like this man was about to push me down the stairs. And I said, please don't. Don't, don't. But I can tell you that every single incident ended the same way. With him crying, the next day it'd be flowers, jewelry, bags. Honey, I got a closet full of stuff from that man. But I never liked any of it and never wore any of it because it always reminded me of the thing that happened that caused him to give me that gift. That wasn't a Gucci bag. No, that was the apology for when you slapped me. <laughs> At one point in time, I even stopped liking flowers. And I love flowers because the flowers just made me think of pain. Well, time went along and eventually I got into therapy. I got into therapy. And I have to admit, I got into therapy not because I was trying to figure out how to leave him. You would think I would have gotten to it for that. I got into therapy because he had convinced me so much that I was at fault, that I was the reason why he couldn't be the kind of man he needed to be. Because I had too much mouth. I had too much attitude. I dressed too provocatively. So I went to therapy to try to figure out how I could work on myself because he had convinced me that I was broken and damaged. And he's a good man. And, and he, I remember him saying, how you gonna mess up a good thing with a good man like me? <laughs> That's what he told me. I remember my therapist. It was within my first session with her. I told her what I was dealing with and she says, well, how can I help you? I said, I wanna be a better person because I don't think I'm a, as good a person as I can be. He says, tell me about your relationship. She said, tell me about your relationship. I told her all about it. And she said, can I tell you, the thing you need to work on for yourself is love. I said, no, I love him. I know how to love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I don't need to work on that. I said, baby, it's not loving him that's the problem. It's loving yourself. It's loving yourself. She said, this ain't the first time you've been mistreated in a relationship, is it? I said, no. She said, the reason why you tolerate it is because you believe that you deserve it. I said, I don't think I deserve to be treated like this. She says, uh-huh. Yeah, you do. Because the only type of behavior that you tolerate and accept is what you believe that you deserve. I don't care what you tell yourself. Look at your relationships. Look at how you allow people to treat you. I said, I don't allow him to treat me any old kind of way. She says, do you go back to him after he does it? Do you accept his apologies? Are you laying in that bed beside him the next night after he did that to you? That's tolerating him. Damn the inviting him. Because you're letting him know it's okay. I said, I don't never told him it's okay. She says, yes, you do because you stay. I said, then how do I leave? How do I leave then? You so smart. How I leave? Hmm? How I leave? Hmm? How I leave? What am I, what am I supposed to do? I love this man. How am I supposed to just leave? I'm mad at her at this point. How am I supposed to just leave? Thank you for sharing this video, Maria, and let me know you shared it. Y'all let me know you shared it. She said, you'll leave when two things happen. 
when the pain is too great for you to take anymore. And when you love yourself enough to accept that you should never be treated in a way that's less than pure, unadulterated love. That sounded nice. I wanted to believe her, but in reality, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to leave him. I was still more focused on hoping he would change and being patient with him and trying to help him change. I was more focused on that than focused on the fact that I, had, I couldn't change him at all. You can't change nobody. You can't. So I did what we do when we're not ready to really change our circumstances. We focus on changing everybody else because focusing on changing everybody else gives us a scapegoat out of having to, to do the hard work of changing ourselves. Changing ourselves is hard. Learning to show up for yourself. Learning to love yourself. Learning to put yourself first. Hardest thing you'll ever do. And deep down we know it's hard. So what do we do? We focus on trying to change them. Because maybe if we can change them and make them treat us better, make them a better person, then life will be good and we don't have to go through all that work of changing ourselves. I didn't consciously think this, but that's what it was. Thank you for sharing this video, Sabrina. Thank you so much for sharing this video. And Stacey McKenzie, I'm going to call y'all out when I see you shared it. Well, time went forward, time went forward, time went forward, and eventually I hit my last straw. I hit my last straw. <laughs> I hit my last straw. And my last straw, without going into too much detail, because to be quite honest, if I had to go into detail about the way it really happened, the fact of the matter is it would not be appropriate for your children to hear this. And the fact of the matter is some of your children, your teenagers need to hear this because some you find some teenagers who are in abusive relationships. But I'll tell you this. Thank you so much for sharing this video. My last straw was when I was sitting in the mirror and I was looking at the bruises. This time I was looking at the bite mark on me. Right there. A bite. See, because this one particular time, I decided I was going to fight back. I decided I was going to fight back. And he was bigger than me and stronger than me. But y'all know what I'm saying when I tell you. When you decide you're going to fight back, you don't care how big they are. I decided I was going to fight back. And that ended in something... I may have been bruised, but I was free. I was free. I eventually left him, never went back to him. Never went back to him, never. So when he called me up talking about some, I'm gonna be in your town, I wanna see you. Why you think I hung up in his face? In all these years, it's been over a decade. You think he'd ever call me up and said I'm sorry? I've been through therapy. I would never take him back, but I've been through therapy. I'm a changed man. I'm a different kind of person. You think he ever did that? No. He just popped up talking about I'm going to be in town. And let me tell you his exact words. I'd love to spend the evening with you. What do you think that meant? Been all these years. And that's what you tell me? Hmm. I hung up in his face. I hung up in his face. Because the fact of the matter is who I am today, who I am today is somebody who would never accept that kind of treatment. And I'll never accept someone in my life, friend, platonic, especially romantic, who would ever do that to me and not have the character to even apologize. I don't hate people. I don't hold grudges. 
But I also know how to guard the door of my soul from letting some old devil back into it. Do you hear me when I say this? Do you hear me when I say this? You can forgive, but you don't have to forget. And unless they have changed their behavior in a consistent way that shows that they've worked in themselves beyond just giving you a nice half-hearted apology. They don't deserve to hold any space in your life. You don't owe them anything. I've changed. I've changed. I'm a different person. Well, God bless you and the next person who will take a risk with you. But I've seen who you are. I've seen what you're about. And I will never let you back in. You may say, MJ, that's so harsh. No, it ain't harsh. It's protecting your spirit. Because unless they have shown you in a clear way that they are a completely different person. You setting yourself up to go through not just the same thing, but worse. Because when you let them come back. What that lets them know is that you're willing to tolerate what happened before and they will get worse. Let me tell you this right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know who sent you this video. I don't. Thank you for sharing this video, Asia and Ruth Ann. But let me tell you this. Once you focus on learning to love yourself, your desire to keep tolerating mistreatment will go away. Your toleration will go, you won't be able to tolerate them anymore. Once you learn to love yourself, listen to me when I tell you this. Once you learn to love yourself, your sense of discernment, your intuition will go up high. Where early on you will see the signs. You say, uh-uh, I ain't fooling with that because I know where this can go. Once you learn to love yourself, even if they fool you enough to make you believe that they're different than what they really are, once they show you who they really are, it ain't going to be that hard for you to step away. Some of y'all are in a bad situation today, not because you can't afford to leave. Not because of the fact that you've been with them so long and, and how you going to do something different. It ain't got nothing to do with time or money. It's got to do with a lack of self-love. Because if you loved yourself at the level that you deserve to love yourself, you would not tolerate any level of treatment that's less than that. That's less than the level of love you give to yourself. The lesson is clear. The lesson is simple. Learn to love yourself. And if you don't know how to do that, therapy, meditation, prayer, but I'm going to tell you what's the most powerful way to learn to love yourself. Separating yourself from anything that makes you feel unlovable. I love you all. And you deserve to love you too. Have a good day.